So what we have here is a 18 foot trailer. Currently it shows as if our trailer brakes aren't working. Uh, we have troubleshot it to know it's down to the trailer because we've had two different vehicles. Uh, with my truck and then uh, I let someone borrow the trailer and it shows trailer hooked up until you hit the brakes and it shows trailer disconnected. So we already got it jacked up. I got a jack stand over here. Uh, I done crawled under the, the trailer and we have a wire broke here and we have two wires broke on that side. And it's all because they use scotch locks. Uh, they use scotch lock on this whole trailer and one by one I've been having to replace them as, as they've been failing. We're going on like four or five years with this trailer. And if you don't know, all a scotch lock does is just cut the wire and transfers the wire that way and it you'll know, cut your strands of wires it makes them weak we're gonna bring out our electrical kit i'm gonna go grab our bag a heat gun and we're gonna actually fix this the correct way i'm hoping i don't have to work under the trailer let's pop this tire off and see it is slap wore out too and uh yeah let's just see if we can get to it without having to lay on our back the whole time okay so you can see these are what i'm talking about these are called three-way scotch locks I've never heard of it before until I actually just Googled trailer brake wiring and uh, trailer brake trailer brake wiring and these came up. Apparently pretty popular. Uh, you can see these scotch locks here. And here's our broken wire on this side. So we're going to go ahead and actually do this the correct way. And what I'm probably going to do is cut it here. And get rid of all of this scotch lock mess. I just got to keep it uh, separated so we don't have to figure that out later. And then we have to go to the other side because it is almost broken off. Well, it's missing a whole scotch lock altogether. It just fell off completely. So let's uh, let's get to going and see if we can't fix this. So here's our arsenal. I use these heat shrink uh, crimps. Here, I'll use this big, it's the, it'd be pretty much the yellow version. And I'll put heat shrink over it. Makes it nice and streamlined. We have our heat gun right there. Uh, this pair of dikes and some strippers. And I don't have my favorite crimping tool, but we'll work around that. So I went ahead and cut this one back. I've isolated everything. Our broke wire goes to it. I'm pretty sure that's our ground side. And my goal is I double this one back to take up some of the slack that this big uh, terminal would have, or we want to call it butt connector. And that way, hopefully, the, the other two sides of this will actually uh, take up, fit fairly nice on the other side. I uh, hope that makes sense. I'll show you as I'm going and the, the end product. So, this side did crimp just like we wanted it to. You can get the theory here. On this side, the biggest thing is do not forget your heat shrink. What I did is, I'm using these MSD crimpers. I really don't like them, but they work. I got another set. Uh, the, the ratchet's so cool, but what I find is sometimes if everything just ain't just right, it don't give the proper... Uh, crimping force i guess you need so i'm putting it on the like one side smaller on the jaw and uh it did good on that other one so let's try it on on this one now all right that's the end result on this one as you can see it's real streamlined uh really good crimp unfortunately i had to use these pos's to crimp it on this one it'll work uh, it didn't go in nowhere i'll zip tie it help with vibrations and everything but when i used these, like I said, it pulled right out on the other side. And it's just a ratchet that doesn't give you the uh, the full clamping force as just a good old pair of pliers. I have to go buy me some more uh, since I've misplaced these. But now let's go do the other side. And yeah, not, not bad. It's gonna be the same thing. Now then, then we got moved to the other uh trailer over there because that scotch lock is totally missing other trailer uh wheel or brake 
Okay, so this is the finished product for this side. Um, I really didn't want to use electrical tape, but one on the heat shrink, I had um, one of my strands of the wire didn't, it had a little bit, uh, like a little long, and it went through my heat shrink. So I just went ahead and wrapped them individually and then wrapped them together. And I added these zip ties just for vibration management, I guess you can say. So we just ain't, uh, just hold all the wires tight and close together and it shouldn't cause any stress on our splices. So now uh, that should be good on this side and we'll move to the other side. As you can see here, um, I put the bottom of the splice against the, uh, the where it's gonna pinch it. At the top, it helps uh, just a cleaner crimp. And then I'll go grab the other side here and put it in and I'll show you the uh, crimp out there. So this is what we got for an after. You can see how much of a footprint it leaves. You can see how the, uh, the parting of the splice is on the bottom and it doesn't split it. I, on the, this splice I did on the wrong side and it just opens up that parting. But a lot, big pick, uh, contact patch. It ain't going nowhere now. We just take this heat shrink now, go over it. We get our heat gun. We're gonna do the same thing, just match it. Electrical tape, zip ties, and put this tire back on. So, ended up not doing a zip tie thing just because the wires were a little bit different in length. These uh, heat shrinked a lot better. Really need, sorry, no electrical tape. And uh, we did the zip tie still just for vibration purposes. You see we got one before, after, and on top of the splice just to help prevent all that stuff. Uh, that should be pretty, plenty of loop for the suspension travel. We're going to throw a little bit of grease onto our lug nuts just to help them as it sits for a long time. Hopefully it comes off with ease again and ready for a test drive. So far so good, I've been playing around with the adjustment. We're gonna get ready to stop in about five seconds. And it is a lot better than it was before. I really think I've been doing it on uh, one wheel for a while, I've been braking on one side. I think that's been another reason why it's been so jerky. But see, right, it's real grabby still uh, once it releases. But I think that's just the nature of the beast uh, with it. I'll uh, do one more stop here and uh, show you what we got. It'll be about a minute or two. I'll pick it back up then. All right. Coming up on our second stop. Definitely felt when the second bar kicked in there. All good came off real good yeah really happy with that so hopefully this helps somebody uh, just trailer brake wiring what I had to do today and just was really thinking it was going to be something internal with the brakes I really don't know how they even work I was going to uh, yank the tire off and just go into it then the side it will let me just crawl under the trailer what if I had some chafing because on this trailer all they did was use a like oxyacetylene torch and just blew holes through each uh, frame section I guess you could say so I've already had like some trailer brake wiring but then uh, talking to somebody about it said well then, then it would probably be a fuse you know good point so wind up simple just got under the trailer and found broken wires and kind of with the trailer it's been the story of its life is either you know breaking a light or a broken wire or something like that it does require the uh, uh, maintenance especially I don't use it a lot like full time but I am the weekend warrior uh, probably once or twice a month type of stuff and stuff fail another thing I did was went ahead and threw some grease in it I've been really bad about that uh, at first it's like oh it's a brand new trailer then you know three years later you still haven't greased this so it has those quick fittings on the outside I just did 10 pumps in each one of them and uh, called it a day so uh, thank you all appreciate y'all coming by hopefully it does help somebody it's really kind of a more of a vlog we're coming to a stop right now you can see if uh, 
see how it jerks me around it, the brakes help so much on this 1500 truck though y'all if y'all got a 1500 and not using trailer brakes yeah, that's pretty good. Then uh, you're definitely hurting. That's probably one reason my truck needs brakes right now. I done had to add brake fluid because it got low. Anyways, I'm gonna quit talking. Um, Long-winded at the end there, but thank y'all for uh, staying with me. Till the next one.